and today's guitar lesson is going to be a bit different. Normally in my videos I teach uh, just songs or different ideas. Uh, this is going to be a real guitar lesson. So it's going to be all about the minor pentatonic scale. I thought I'd do something different. Hopefully you like it. If you do, don't forget to comment in the comment section. So I'm going to teach you about the minor pentatonic scale. I'm going to hopefully make it so you understand what the pentatonic scale is, how to use it, how to apply it in different contexts, uh, and just to get around the fretboard as well. Just before I start going into the lesson though, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, which is Andy Hillier, give me a like on the video, and I'd love to hear from you. I do read every comment, so leave me some comments in the comment section. Okay, the minor pentatonic scale. Let's start with the basics. What is a scale? A scale is just a group of notes that go together, uh, and they sound like nice, hopefully nice, uh, although some scales sound weird. So lots of different types of scales, but the minor pentatonic scale is a very simple scale. It's called a pentatonic scale because like pent means five, it's a five note scale. Although often when people teach it, they just teach a shape and then they've got no idea that they're just playing five notes, they just play a shape. So I wanted to hopefully unravel everything for in this lesson. So five note scale, um, we're gonna do it in the key of A. So it's gonna be an A minor pentatonic. But the good thing about the guitar is, uh, and these shapes that I'm going to show you, you move it all up and down the neck and you can play in every single key. It's much easier than if you're playing a piano when you have to learn the different notes. Okay, so let's get down to it. A minor pentatonic scale. Now we need to know where the note A is to start because A is the lowest note. We call it the root note of the chord, of an A minor chord. All right, so on the E string, top string nearest to your face, E5, that note is A. But we're not going to think of it as A, we're going to think of it as 1. Now we need to know where all the A's are, or all the 1's are, on the neck. Well not all of them, but a few of them to start with, right? So E5 is A, but we're going to think of it as 1. The next one that I need you to know is on the D string, D7. So it's still an A, note A. So think of that as a one as well. So you've got a one here on E5, a one here on D7. We've got one more that I want you to learn now, which is on the B string on B10. So that note is also A or one. So we've got E5, D7, and B10. Very important that we know where the root note, because that's where we get the pentatonic scale from. So these are all A's. Okay, so next note that we need. We're gonna go on to the next string up. So we've got the E5. We're gonna play it with our third finger for the moment, and then use our first finger to play A3. So we've got E5 and A3. Now if you listen to those two notes together, they sound sad because this note here is what we call a flat third. Now don't worry too much about what that means. Basically, very quickly, um, what we have what we call intervals. Now intervals are, are a way for us to measure the distance between the notes. And it's based around a major scale. We're not gonna learn a major scale, but a major scale just goes. And we number the major scale, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we go back to one. Um, but then we also have notes in between it. So if I go one, to the second note, there's a note in between that which we call a flat second because flat means down one. Down one fret is a flat. Okay, so we've got this E5 which we call one. A string at the third fret, we're going to call that flat three. That's its name, flat three. It's the distance from this note to this note. And that sounds sad. 
and that gives us the minor sound. So this is a very important note for the minor pentatonic scale. It gives us that sad sound. Okay, so we've got E5, A3, and now we're gonna use our third finger on A5. Now this note is called the fourth. So we've got the first, the flat third, and the fourth. If you hear the relationship between the root, the one, and the four, they, they sound quite nice together. It always reminds me, when, when I was learning in uh, studying uh, back at the Guitar Institute, uh, and we had to learn the intervals, um, they gave us different like melodies to work out the different intervals. Uh, and that always reminds me of... Here comes a bride. So every time I just hear a fourth, in my head, it goes straight to that. Okay, so that's a fourth. So we've got the root, the flat third on A3, the fourth on A5, and then we're gonna move that finger up two frets. So we're on A7. And that note, if we play with the root, it's a power chord. So it's the fifth. So we've got the root and the fifth. So you often see on music, when they have a power chord, if it's an A chord, they'll put A5, because it's the first note and the fifth note of a major scale. So, so far we've got the root, the flat third, the fourth, and the fifth. One more note we're gonna learn for now, we're gonna play the E string at fret three. So that's actually before the one. So it's a note before, so E3. Now that interval is the flat seven. And this is a bit of a jazzy sounding note against the root. Um, I'll put that up an octave for a second. So if we play this flat seven up an octave, you get it here. You get that little bit of dissonance, but not too bad, not too harsh. Okay, so E3 is the flat seven. So we've got flat seven, then one which is home, flat third, which is sad, then we've got fourth, and then the fifth. The fifth sounds great with the root, we call that a perfect fifth, but we're just gonna call it fifth for now. So we've got flat seven, root, flat third, fourth, and fifth. And they're all the notes of the minor pentatonic scale, so you go. This is the root. So we're playing one note before the root. Now, this is a great shape, because we can move this um, in the different octaves, use the same shape, and we can play it all over the neck. So, we've got this shape. Hopefully you've got that in, under your fingers, so using the first finger, third finger, first finger, third finger, then move up two frets, and we've got the third finger again, up two frets. So, so if, as long as you're used to that shape, we can move on. Then, we can do the same thing, but on A in the next shape. So, we've had the E string at the fifth fret is the first A, now we've got the D string at fret seven. So this is our one. So we're gonna have the uh, flat seven on your first finger, so fret D five. And then D seven is the one. Then the flat third, the sad note, will be on G five. So we've got. And then you use your third finger, because we're doing the same shape on G7, which is the fourth, straight down from the root note. And then the fifth, we go up two frets, to G9. And if we play that with the root, we've got another power chord. So this shape, we've got. So it's exactly the same shape, if you watch. Okay, let's do one more octave. So the next A we've got is on B10. So we're gonna do the same shape around it. So first finger is down two frets, so on B8, then B10, onto the E string, play E8, E10, then move up two frets. So you get. Okay, so the A on the E string at the fifth fret, and we'll play the shape around that. Now on the A, which is on the D string at the seventh fret. 
notes. And then on the A on the B string, which is on the 10th fret of the B10, we go. So if we put that all together, you get. And without pausing. Let's just play it a little bit slower. I want you to think about the intervals. So, the one feels like home. That's seven, a little bit jazzy. It kind of wants to go back to one. You've got the flat third, the sad sounding note. And up the octave as well. And up the next octave. Fourth, just straight down the string from the root. And the fifth is like your power chord shape from the root. Okay, so let's have a little play. That's up, on the way down. Uh, so let's have a little improvising. So you could do something like... That's a minor pentatonic from here all the way to here. Now if we want to extend it a little bit, we've also got an A on the A string at the 12th fret. And we can do that same shape around it, so we go. Okay, so. Which is actually exactly the same notes as down here. With the A on the D7. A on the A string at the 12th fret. And then one more octave, we've got an A on the G string at the 14th fret. Now this has got to be a slightly different shape because of the way the guitar's tuned in fourth, 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 and then we, we have a third. So when you go from the G string to the B string, you play fret um, four rather than fret five to get to the next note, to get to the next string. And if my guitar was perfectly in tune, that'd be great. And then, back to a fourth on the last two strings. So, when we're here on the G14, we have to play 12, 14, but then we go to the next string with the same shape. We have to move up one fret, so it goes 12, 14, and then we go 13, 15, and then 17. So it goes. So that's the only place where it's a slightly different shape. We just have to move up fret. So if we put those two octaves up here, we've got. Okay, and then all of a sudden we've got from here all the way up to here. So that gives us pretty much the whole fretboard uh, using the A minor pentatonic scale. Now it sounds great over an A minor chord, but we can also use it against a blues as well, even if it's like using major chords. Um, the notes have a slightly different um, tonality. When you play a major chord, the minor third sounds a bit more jazzy, it's, and it feels like it wants to go up. Um, lots of players go and bend that minor third, the flat third, and make it to a major chord. If you play this bar chord, you'll see that this note here is the major third. So players often play that and bend it up. So you can do it in any octave. So the minor third down here on fret three of the A string. You can do a little bend on it. Then down here. Also down here on the E string on the eighth fret. So you can, when you play over a major um, blues, you can over the one chord, you can do that. Um, and when you're playing over a blues, it uses the one, four, five chords. And you're like, oh, don't know what the one, four, five is. You actually do now, because the intervals that we played, you've got the one, flat third, the four, 
and the five. So the, the chords that it uses in a blues, you get a, the one, which is A major, then you get the four, which will be D major, and then the five, which will be E major. But you can play the minor pentatonic over all of those, uh, over the whole blues progression, and that will sound cool. Okay, another thing that's nice to do with it um, is to play um, uh, two notes at the same time, double stops we call them. And this shape works perfectly for that. So, if we go down to the flat seven and play it with the flat third, so your first finger on A3 and E3, top two strings, they sound cool together. Then we could do the same on the root and the fourth, so E5 uh, and A5 at the same time. So we And then we can do it on the next string, we've got the A3, but then the next note on the next string is on fret five, so we could play the root here, and then this is the flat seven from the next shape up. So you've got, and then you could play A5 and D5. So you've got, and then we could play A7, and D7. So you've got. And then we can play it on the next two strings, so D5 and G5. And then G and D7. on the bottom two strings as well. Actually we've got fret, uh, G5, sorry, G7 and B8. We can do that together. And we go up two frets, same shape. And then the bottom two strings, E8 and B8, E10 and B10. about playing like more than one note at the same time. Try and avoid doing too many notes because um, if you're playing against a chord it might sound a bit weird. Another thing that this shape is good for is playing quite quickly over the minor pentatonic scale because it uses the same shape in the different octaves. It's relatively easy to play a bit faster than the traditional shapes. You just do the same thing over the different octaves. And you can also do legato with it. So, so for that, I like to use my first finger on the flat seven, which is fret three on the E string. Second finger on E five, which is the root. Then first finger on the flat third, which is A three. Second finger on A five, which is the fourth. And little finger on the fifth, which is A seven. So you do it as hammer-ons. Same on the next octave. Oh, sorry. Then up the next octave. So you end up. And you can do hammer ons and pull offs on the way down. So that's hammer-ons and pull-offs, going over the different octaves, and then you just got to experiment with it. Um, and just try and th think in your head when you're playing those intervals, so flat seven, root, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root, 
flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root, flat third, fourth, and fifth. And then the same on these octaves, flat seven, root, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root, flat third, fourth, and fifth. Because that's what gives the different tonality to what you're playing. And then you just gotta put it all together, uh, experiment and see how you get on. Um, one other thing, you've got like some bends as well. So you can bend any note as long as you're going to the next note in the scale. So the nice things to do is if you're on G string at the seventh fret, instead of just sliding up to the, the next note, you could bend to it. You could do it on fret five on the um, G string. So both of those notes are nice to and then you can do that in different octaves. So you're bending the minor third, the flat third, up a tone. The fourth up to the fifth. And then you can bend the fifth as well. So you just gotta put it together, slides, hammer-ons, uh, and just make it sound musical. So there you go, that's the minor pentatonic. Hopefully you found this lesson useful. Hopefully you've liked this format of just me teaching. More like kind of my private lessons rather than uh, the lessons that I tend to do on YouTube. If you have enjoyed it, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, which is Andy Hillier, give me a like on the video. Hopefully uh, I'll get some views on this video, so please like it, it kind of helps get up the uh, analytics. Um, and the more comments, the better as well. I do read every comment, so please leave me a comment in the comment section. Um, let me know where in the world you're from, what you thought of this video, uh, and what future lessons I should do. Give me some uh, feedback. And if you love what I'm doing, you want to support me, support the channel, keep me doing this, then you can support me on Patreon. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Well, thanks for watching this. I do appreciate it. I've been Andy Hillier, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.